Too many fathers in America are missing. They are AWOL, they are MIA. They are missing from lives, from homes. They're abandoning their responsibilities, acting like boys instead of men. And this is particularly true in the African-American community where more than half of all black children are growing up without a father. And what does that mean? Well, you might be familiar with the statistics. If you grow up without a father or in a single parent home, you are more than five times more likely to grow up in poverty, more than nine times more likely these children to drop out of school, and more than 20 times more likely to wind up in prison. That's important, that's real, and that's totally absent from the conversation that's taking place in America right now about race and police violence. Instead, we are focusing on, well, the minor details and the big ones from the latest tragedy, this one in Chicago. Newly released body cam video shows a 13-year-old being killed by a Chicago police officer as he appeared to raise his hands in surrender. Police say he had a gun, but the family say he obeyed officers' instructions. You know, kind of a here-we-go-again moment, right? A very lazy and inflammatory way to tell the story of uh, Adam Toledo here, just 13 when he was gunned down. Let's take another look at that footage without the CBS fanfare and narration. Please stop! Stop! My hey, show me your hey. Can you see that? A more responsible reveal of this video shows that the young man actually did have a gun, and that was discoverable for anybody, but they're leaving that out for some reason. Because the national conversation the media and so many Democrats in the far left want to have is not really a conversation. They just want to talk about more gun control and, um, well, perhaps uh, some platitudes about justice. Not a real conversation. We've heard this before, haven't we? This needs to be a huge national conversation. It is a crime that has sparked a national conversation. If anything, we need a national conversation. The outrage that has sparked a national conversation. It ignited a national conversation. This is starting a very interesting conversation nationwide. A national conversation has begun. But like we talked about, it's not a two-way conversation. Again, just more gun control and uh, calls for justice, which sounds great, but... It's ringing pretty hollow at this point. That starts with justice for George Floyd. Calling for justice after the death of George Floyd in police custody. Justice for 12-year-old Tamir Rice. There will be justice for Mr. Gray. There will be justice for his family. And there will be justice for the people of Baltimore. And we wanted justice for George Floyd. We wanted justice for Breonna Taylor. The, the work hasn't stopped. And it will never stop, I guess. I mean, look. I like justice, you like justice, but now it sounds almost like thoughts and prayers in the aftermath of a, of a mass shooting. The real conversation that we're trying to have here, that we're trying to initiate, that we hope catches on, is talk about a bit more practical matters in addition to justice, okay? Like, don't run away from cops. We have seen that time and time again. They are running when they should be cooperating. And also, hey, how about not choosing a life of crime? Now, I want to point this out with uh, Dante Wright. Uh, you know about this in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. He did have something of a criminal record, uh, a father already at just the age of 20, but he himself had a mother and father who were married, Arbery and Katie Wright, who have been together and suffering throughout all of this. Uh, but this seems to be the exception in a lot of these cases. Right now, as we look at this 13-year-old Adam Toledo, don't know too much about him. Um, these were his nicknames, Lil Homicide and Baby Diablo. Some are wondering also what he was doing out so late at night by himself. Um, the issue of absentee fathers, it is prevalent and it's not talked about. We're going to summarize some high profile folks that we've all heard of, but do you know the status of well, their fathers, did they have them, did they not? George Floyd, who had a significant criminal record, his father died in the early 2000s, but they were estranged since he was just two years old. What about Michael Brown? Do you remember this from Ferguson? Uh, parents never married. His father wasn't around much, according to his, uh, his mother, who's still alive. Trayvon Martin, 
Back in 2012, you remember this case, his parents were divorced, minimal interaction with the father. Now it's interesting, this case actually gave rise to the Black Lives Matter movement. I wanna show you something, you probably have heard this by now, the Black Lives Matter website, we've talked about it before. Some of their values are just off the charts, weird and anti-family. Their governing values, here is what they say about the nuclear family, we disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirements by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another. Uh, hard to really follow that, but it doesn't sound like it's good for anybody. So family is crumbling, that's a real problem here. And those who are brave enough, and somehow you, it, it takes bravery to speak about these issues, it does in today's warp culture. And one of the bravest of them all, Candace Owens. The biggest issue facing black America is father absence. We have children that are growing up without their fathers in the home. The single, father, the single motherhood rate in the black community today is 74%. 74% of our children are growing up without a father in the home. You're nine times more lock, likely to end up in prison. You're six times more likely to drop out, a bar, uh, drop out of high school. Um, and you're 12 times more likely to lead a life of poverty. Why is nobody talking about father absence? And why do we keep being silenced when we actually do? Wow, how about that, huh? And they do try to silence her. They try to cancel her for talking like this. Take a look at this headline. And she deals with this almost every day of her life. Candace Owens is a willing tool of Republican racists. Um, but those numbers are pretty powerful, right? We started the show uh, with this issue. Absentee fathers shirking their responsibilities, acting like boys when they should be acting like men. Uh, five times more likely to grow up in poverty, nine times more likely to drop out of school, 20 times more likely to end up in prison. This is a real conversation. And at one point, certain Democrats were willing to have it. Not anymore. Too many fathers are MIA. Too many fathers are AWOL. Missing from too many lives and too many homes. They've abandoned their responsibilities. They're acting like boys instead of men. You and I know this is true everywhere, but nowhere is it more true than in the African-American community. We know that more than half of all black children live in single parent households. We know the statistics that children who grow up with a fa out of father are five times more likely to live in poverty and commit crime. They're nine times more likely to drop out of school, 20 times more likely to end up in prison. He knows the problem, but the left smacked him around for saying this stuff, and he's hardly said it since. Hardly said it since. He could do so much, but he's afraid of that real conversation, and so are so many others. So perhaps I'm an unlikely messenger, but it's an important message. Here goes, okay? You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.